Using high risk textures with DuckStation is actually pretty easy. All you need to do is find a texture pack that's actually compatible with DuckStation. Unfortunately, the texture packs that are made for the Beetle emulator are not compatible with DuckStation and vice versa. So any texture pack you do find, make sure that it explicitly states that it's for DuckStation. Now, because this feature only recently got an update to the point people actually started using it, there's not too many texture packs about. So I'll link what I can in the description below, but honestly, the best resource so far has actually been YouTube. There's quite a few creators that add all of their upload links directly in their descriptions. And I'll put a link for all of the best channels that I've found so far in the description below. Once you've found a texture pack and downloaded it, obviously you want to unzip it and open it up. And inside you should find another folder with a bunch of letters and numbers. This is the serial number of the version that you need to use. Just because you've already got the game doesn't necessarily mean you've got the correct version. And of course, we need to verify that the version that we're using in DuckStation matches this right here. And to do that, all you need to do is bring up DuckStation with your games list, find the game that you're adding textures to, and on the left hand side, you've got a serial number right here. So now I can bring this over here and make sure that these are matching up perfectly. If these don't match, it means that you have the incorrect version, in which case you need to get the correct one. Now you need to add this folder with the serial number into the textures folder of DuckStation. Now this textures folder is going to be in one of two different locations, depending or not if you're using portable mode. And if you are using portable mode in the root of DuckStation, you should see all of these folders and you should also have this portable.txt file present. If that is the case, you can just take this folder and move it into that textures folder of DuckStation. If you're not using portable mode, you're probably not going to see all of these folders and you're definitely not going to have this portable text file present. And if that's the case for you, all of these folders are going to be in your documents. So in the quick access on the left hand side, go to your documents and you should see a folder called DuckStation. Go in here and you can see all of those folders that were in the root of DuckStation if we were using portable mode. So all we need to do is take this folder and move it into the textures folder here instead. Now we need to actually turn on high risk textures and faff around with some settings in DuckStation. So obviously you want to open it up, then go to settings in the top left hand corner and open up the graphics options. Then go over to the texture replacement tab. You need to enable texture cache and enable texture replacement. And I fully recommend preload texture replacements, even though it's an optional extra. It does take longer to load up the game because obviously it's preloading those textures in, but it does significantly reduce the stuttering that can happen when those textures are actively being loaded in. For me, it goes on and it stays on. Now these two options are the background replacement options and not every single game is gonna require these. These only relate to games that use large 2D images for their backgrounds. Enable VRAM write replacements actually turns on background replacement and use old MDEC routines is only to be used with older texture packs. It's essentially a compatibility option. The instructions for the texture pack should tell you if you need these on or off. And I say should very loosely. So if your backgrounds are not being HDified, even though it's got them, try messing around with these options to make it work. The other options that I haven't covered are dumping options. And unless you're actually creating high res texture packs, these do not apply to you. Now, if you come back over to the rendering and normal graphics options, this is what I recommend for your defaults. But as per usual, your own preference always takes precedence. You can do whatever you want. But with texture filtering, sprite texture filtering and scaling, I recommend leaving on nearest neighbor because you can get a true idea of what those HD textures look like with no filtering whatsoever, giving you a true gauge if that HD texture pack is actually any good or not. Sometimes the texture pack creator will give a bunch of recommended settings for these. And if that is the case, they've done so for a reason and you should definitely follow their advice. Once you've got your settings all sorted out, you can go ahead and close this and then start the game. Now, if you've got a preload replacement textures on, you should see this and it's a nice visual indication that those high res textures are actually being loaded. There we go, that's how to use high-risk textures with DuckStation. Now, I've already done this for the PPSSPP emulator and the PCSX2 emulator, and I'll put links for those videos in the description below. If you've been triggered by this video for whatever reason, I do have a DuckStation guide covering the most accurate and authentic settings, and an enhancements guide just without using high-risk textures. So if you've been watching this and flinching, check out those videos. And don't forget, I'm gonna put a bunch of resources in the description below to get you started. Now, if you found this video helpful, slam me a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.